so Mark, can classical singing and classical technique, classical training, uh, be beneficial to a contemporary vocalist? You know? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But Judy, can commercial singing and commercial training, can that be beneficial for a classical artist? Oh yeah. Let's, Let's talk. talk. Hi, I'm Judy Rodman. The video you're just about to watch is my interview with classical vocal coach and classical vocalist, Mark Tress. Uh, it's a fascinating look at contemporary and classical vocal technique and vocal training and what you can gain from combining them both. So, enjoy. So, <laughs> uh, we got together to do something very unusual. It's, it's not done very often. I certainly haven't done it with anybody else myself, but we're training each other mm -hmm. in, in like a cross training. I'm uh, teaching you contemporary voice and you're teaching me classical voice. And it has been so fabulous to do this and to see what's come of it, not only for my voice and your voice, but also for our students. Absolutely. So tell them how we met. Well, uh, so I was moving to Nashville from yeah. Columbus, Ohio, yeah. and uh, I thought, you know, I really wanted to um, invest my time in becoming the best teacher that I could and the best singer that I could, really, best musician. And so I thought, uh, what's the, the greatest way to do that is to learn from the best. So I reached out to a bunch of people in town, and you were kind enough to meet with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got breakfast in the morning, and I asked you if I could you know, learn from you and if you could um, do whatever be available for me to, you know, have some. And you know what, about. what's really funny in serendipitous and I think ordered on a, from a, a lot higher place is that I, in my back of my mind, when I met you for coffee that morning, and I've been thinking this for months, I really wanted to do some classical lessons. I used to dream about it. My, my vocal coach, Gerald Arthur, passed away this year. And, but I dreamed about, I would dream about going back to him and getting some classical lessons because wow. it, it feels so good for me to do the Italian art songs and I uh, used it to heal. And I had run into a you know virus in the winter and was having trouble getting the very top of my head voice, which is just really an ego trip. But nevertheless, I, I was thinking, man, I would really love to do some classical lessons. And you told me that you were looking for, you said it under your breath, but she's like, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm kind of in the market for a contemporary uh, I was, contemporary yeah. coach. Do you remember saying that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so then the light bulbs go on and we're like, how about we trade for an hour? And that was, what, a year ago? I guess it was about a year ago, yeah. Isn't so, amazing? yeah, and we've been, we do it every week, and I swear, I learn something new every week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. So, Mark, let's talk about um, the similarities that we found and the differences we found, because you're re you really are an opera singer. I mean, you're the real deal. You're not just somebody that came out of a couple of years of, uh, you know, voice lessons and, and, and all that. You actually sing it besides teach it. And, and I've been doing it contemporary voice for about 50 years now. So what if we, let's talk about what we've discovered there are the similarities and differences in those genres. Sure. Um, I think one thing that I, I like to talk about, and I try to express this to my students too, is at the top of our crafts, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing very much the same thing. Uh, the top of the operatic world, we're working on the communication, we're working on delivering a message and engaging with our audience just through a different medium. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's more so expected in the commercial world, whereas in the classical world, we spend so many years developing the art form and working on our voice and waiting for that to mature. Mm -hmm. um, but truly, I mean, it's about the message and about the communication and uh, the delivery and how we're able to do that. Yeah. When, I mean, I think all art is about message delivery. And we, and, you know, classical we uses, uh, to me, it uses uh, sound more than lyric. And in contemporary voice, it uses lyric more than sound. But you're right. I never really thought about that. But it is about becoming great communicators in the, in the medium that we, uh, we're working in and doing it legitimately and authentically within that genre. That's exactly. Tricky. Yeah. Exactly. And I think I might get, be getting ahead of ourselves here, but something that you talk about is like finding the heart in the room, you know, and who you're communicating with. Room, right. And this might be a separate uh, podcast or something, but uh, I think the challenge that we face as classical singers and opera singers is our hearts 
that we're reaching are way further. So the type of medium that we need to use in terms of the way that we're projecting our voice in the terms of the way that we're holding ourselves on stage is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe something that we'll talk about eventually. You know, and, and, and sometimes uh, and the, the idea of the, of the one heart, though, would be the same. The, I, the idea of who, who, the heart, who is the heart that you're, you're talking to. And instead of necessarily talking to the room, whether you're doing contemporary or classical, uh, you would talk to the heart the lyric is to. So if it's a mm -hmm. you know piece Absolutely. from an, uh, an opera, uh, there's a, there's a script with that, right? And uh, there's a person that you're actually talking to, and there's a message you're delivering. So that is the same because with contemporary voice, if you're in an arena, that's very I true. I mean, you know that's what I'm very saying? True. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I think it's more like the differences between theater and film, where contemporary voice, you know, one lift of the eyebrow and it's exactly. Uh, I hope we get to talk the about the nuance that of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to really explore that one. <laughs> we we like I say we learn something every every time we work uh, work together. Uh, there's a difference in jaw movement too. I notice when the you're difference. teaching me, it, everything kind of stays a little bit more. Nothing's ever stiff, which I think is what some teachers, uh, what, uh, classical and contemporary boys get wrong. This needs to more move a little bit. But classically, I'm having to keep the back open more uniformly. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think one of the biggest downfalls of teaching is we get into a habit of trying to fixate uh, ourselves and even more so our students in a particular position before they're singing. And <clears throat> the one thing that I try to avoid is uh, language like uh, stand upright or, you know, keep your head really, really tall, you know, things that would lock you up right but i think you're very right in in commercial singing um there's more of that kind of natural colloquialism that we're using um that can be amplified with a microphone mm -hmm. uh right. in classical singing we're relying on how well can we carry the sounds that we're making in a continuous line to the audience so that it's uninterrupted yeah you may have some natural reverb in the venue but you don't have the mic that's right and uh, that's huge hugely different i remember uh, when I was doing uh, jingles in Memphis, and there would be, uh, they, I was in a staff group, and we were doing, you know, contemporary jingle, jingles. Yeah. And there was a classical singer that came in because she was so amazing as a vocalist, and they thought, well, maybe she'd be good, you know, as a soloist or something, or pop in the group every once in a while. They couldn't get her on tape. Oh, she could goodness. peak the meter so badly. Uh, and plus with the vibrato and all that kind of other stuff. But the big deal was the mic. You have to, if you're a classical singer and you want to do contemporary voice, you've got to finesse your volume uh, where, and, and also the volume differences can't be as big, I think, mm -hmm. with classical as contemporary, because we, we need to, so, so almost self-compress as contemporary artists. So that the we never peak the meter. Once they set it, it'll capture everything that we're doing. Does Absolutely. That make sense? Yeah, no, live totally. and recording. Uh, so that's learning. But then, as a class doing classical stuff, you've told me more than once. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and like be fully classical, you know, or something. Meaning, go ahead and be be loud. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I do it, and it's like, okay, that's that creating some endorphins. <laughs> Yeah, it's a release, right? It totally is a release. Vibrations are just like crazy. Yeah. I couldn't sing contemporary voice like that, but classically, oh my gosh, that's so much fun. But it's just an important thing to know if somebody, you know, we're singing that other medium. Yeah, I mean, it's a desirable trait in classical music because you have to sing over so many instruments. Right. And uh, in some respect, I shouldn't say across the board, but louder is better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it doesn't make any sense to be truly loud without any, you know, purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. And that translates right. into commercial music. And I think that this mm -hmm. goes into how we should respect great artists in each other's fields too. Totally. Instead mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, classical's all, you know, this highbrow stuff and, and, and contemporaries, all this, well, get a hayseed and put it in your mouth. You know? <laughs> um, because truly you, uh, you train, you, you create tissue changes as you train your voice with these mm -hmm. exercises and the volume that you train at, that you eventually train at. Um, and with popular genre, we are training with nuance, with, with real nuance. And we have to be uh, maybe more like microscopic with changes and stuff. So if we can, we can learn from each other, 
and uh, and enhance our you know each other's genres that way too yeah well i'm a better communicator and i'm a better singer when i'm learning about the nuances and, and effectively applying them in my classical singing in classical singing too yeah absolutely um, and see working in my head voice which you you know when when i'm working with you i'm more in my head voice than i'm ever in my head voice unless i'm demonstrating something for you guys uh, up there but uh that has strengthened my head register and made my vocal cords flexible enough to reach those be able to stretch that far without pain or strain or anything Great. and that <clears throat> i bring that strength and flexibility into my mix my higher uh chest voice uh where you know those pesky places that we all go like oh that's you know that's such a hard place to be singing that place right at the top of our chest voice that will belt in the wrong way rather than the mm -hmm. right way so uh yeah it's just so uh changed i mean because of working with you i've actually hit a, a higher note than i've ever hit in my life my 50 plus years now of singing professionally so i sang an f above high c so <laughs> yeah i'm like i don't even think i can <clears throat> hear that high <laughs> <clears throat> so thank you you're welcome uh, yeah that's great so let me see and i'm putting my glasses on because I'm reading this list to make sure we cover some things and I can't see it without my glasses anymore. Um, there's also a difference in, uh, uh, in, in how long we hold vowels open, right? And that's been a thing I yes. found that's been difficult for classical singers when yes. they transition to popular genre singing. They tend to open, to, to, to fill the space with the vowel and that sounds fake. When we when we mm -hmm. do popular genre singing, I'm I'm like sing it and be done with it. Yes, I mean that's that's textbook something that's just kind of expected in the in the field. I think uh, what it boils down to is if you are interested in singing various styles of music, it's kind of knowing what is esoteric to that field, knowing what is um, a part of the the descriptors that is allowing yeah. you to sing that style yeah. of music. Um, and for us. You're exactly right. It's very much expected, especially in the Italianate kind of art song form mm -hmm. or bel canto, as we call it. Mm -hmm. Just hold the vowel, spin the vibrato, and mm -hmm. keep the line moving. And again, it is more about the music and sometimes a little bit less about the lyric. Mm -hmm. Or you just define the lyric differently. You're exactly yeah. right. That's a great way yeah. of putting it. But here, uh, let's talk about how contemporary and classical training a little bit more they help each other. And yes. I would say uh, that you can take that uh, articulation thing and class classical uh, training can help or just work, you know, working with you has reminded me how the back needs to stay open. Mm -hmm. Even if I am seeing contemporary with contemporary lyrical formation, I should form those lyrics in the front rather than in the back. And that would tight because that would tighten up my throat. So uh, that is a typical demo or uh, demo or singers uh, or singer that's never been trained, a lot of times they'll do that. And so that's where I put the knuckle on the jaw app. Yeah, I and, that. and then, but that's, you get me doing that without putting my knuckle on my jaw. <laughs> um, what, how does, uh, that's just one of the myriad ways that working up in the upper register, uh, which also is very healthy for the chords and brings, like I said, brings the strength and flexibility of the head voice into the popular genre money notes so mm -hmm. that the belt can be the healthy belt instead of the bad pushy belt no matter what you're singing even rock even metal scream backwards you know so what is what's helped what do you think can can help con classical with some contemporary thought well uh i just wanted to make a, a quick comment on it i think part of the reason why we work so hard to develop our head voice too mm -hmm. Uh, it's because it's expected in the craft, but what that does is there's still some foundation in the sound of our head voice because it has to project. It can't be this breathy kind of head right, voice. Right, right. And the development of those muscles, as you know, the various muscles that are interplying there, uh, are so relatable to the what's expected of uh, good commercial singing. Um, but yes. Uh, and your question was how does yes. commercial singing? Yes, the resonance. Work? You're right. I mean, it builds. Oh, it absolutely. builds resonance in commercial singing as well. Right, and just. Uh, Commercial singing is more about resonance than it is about volume because a lot of great commercial singers don't sing very loud. You would think they do. 
like I'll give you a one from the past that I know of because uh, I, I knew her, an engineer that worked with her, and that's Karen Carpenter. You know how rich her sound yeah. was. She hard she you could just she, she said he she, she hardly sang at all loud, wow. but it just opened that microphone up to her voice mm -hmm. and got you know and and her instrument was open. So the combination of both was all this rich like chocolate mousse sound that was her sound yeah so um yeah that i think that blew my mind when you first talked to me about that because uh you know i'd been singing classical music from a while for a while now but uh as you know i came from a jazz r b kind of pop background. yeah i'm starting mm -hmm. uh so i've always had a love for that kind of music and i never understood why at my you know the, at the top of my performance when i thought i was really giving my all on stage I sounded like garbage through the mic. <laughs> I did. I sounded like garbage because I was too loud. I was too open. It was, it, you know, was maxing out all of the factors of mm -hmm. the equipment that I was working with. And I, it didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And when you told me that some of the best singers in the world um, are really, really focusing in on the nuance and the, the volume has nothing to do mm -hmm. with how good or bad of a singer it is. It's all about, you know, when I was working, when I was an artist, and I, I remember singing such, like, I knew I was singing loud. And the mix, or, you know, the, when we heard the yeah. playback, it was like I was all buried in the track, and I'm looking at the engineer, and he doesn't know why. <clears throat> well, now I do know why. It's because I was singing too loud, and that he had to pull the fader back. Yeah, that's crazy. So he wasn't capturing, not, he was, he was capturing my volume, but not the bandwidth, you know, not the resonance. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you back off uh, singing, then, yeah, so it's, it's tricky. So we, with us working with each other, we are definitely learning about control in different ways. Absolutely. Our cross training has helped so much with controlling our voice. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things that's, I don't know, we want to keep talking yeah, about this, yeah. but one of the things that's been helpful for me is uh, in classical music at the top of my range as a male tenor, it's release more sound engage more and you know project mm -hmm. and so i always had this impression that uh commercial singing was a little bit similar so that when you were really feeling it you were really providing a lot to the sound people could hear that kind of emotion and you would do it in that way and it, it was with training uh with you that i understood that you could still convey the same emotion you can still project how you're feeling without overdoing the volume it's mm -hmm. you know stretching your voice in that part of your register without uh, trying to push through it mm -hmm. and to me I thought that if you have a little bit of the grit you, you show a little bit of that effort that it, it reads but in fact it plummets the sound when it goes through a microphone yeah and that was completely eye-opening for me yeah yeah it's so cool yeah. it's protective of your chords too because we don't train as long as you do that we is, don't start when we're babies that's true uh, I mean we do but we're singing contemporary stuff yeah. but uh, but you know it does it takes it, you're 30 before you're really ready to sing classically yeah the you best, mature right? such the, at such the, a later age. The instrument age. has to harden and, yeah. uh, and all that and everything. Uh, okay, so let me look at what else we were going to talk about. And that is, um, what uh, are the biggest issues when you're teaching a contemporary singer who needs to maybe do a classical song mm -hmm. for maybe an audition uh, or just, you know, it's gonna, wants to have some fun with classical stuff? Uh, what's the biggest issues you run into that they don't know? Well, you touched on this earlier, and uh, I think it's just part of the craft. And one of the things is uh, less is more in commercial music. It's it's like you said, the eyebrow lift. It's mm -hmm. kind of that like just the natural emotion. Tell me a story. I want to be looking at a person. Mm -hmm. When you're in classical music, the nature of the music lends itself to be a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. more more for the, the stage kind of. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of students that uh, want to sing as if they're singing commercial music and, and nuance each and every word. Yeah, and when, maybe bends and stuff. Exactly, exactly. And so uh, sometimes for classical music, uh, that might be appropriate, but usually it's about that through line. Um, and that breath support and the continuity of the sound, which again is helpful for commercial music and vice versa. Right. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it's just a different kind of style. Most of my students um, have the raw ability to sing in their head voice or something like mm -hmm. that, but they're usually a little trepidatious about kind of diving into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the new and the nuances in classical voice. 
you know, I've, I've been taught one year of classical voice, and that's why I got Sorry, my please. voice back, yeah. because I learned the Italian songs, but I just learned the, the Italian songs. I didn't learn how to do them. And with you oh, learning, your tech, your tech, your, your is nuanced about your uh, teaching. Like, you know, when I didn't lift, you know, in ways that I'm like, how did you know I just didn't do that? But uh, it's been so much fun to work with a master teacher Likewise. that knows so, that. that. Um, but where, where I run into trouble with, uh, with a classical singer that wants to learn contemporary voice mm -hmm. for whatever the reasons, I'll never forget, I had, I had one girl who was trained at the Royal Academy and Eastman and all that. She had a really big voice and all that. But what she was writing was more like, uh, like uh, 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 alt pop, like uh, uh, Alanis Morissette, uh, Paula Cole, sure. uh, Evanescence, that kind of thing, you know. And so all that big voice, that didn't work at all. Mm, no. And the first thing she did was throw the baby out with bathwater mark. She totally flattened out her soft uh, palate, and she sounded like this. So we had to get that nuance of keeping what she was doing right in that in the big voice that she developed, but backing off the and, and changing the articulation and all that where she could sing Celine Dion without wow. sounding like an opera singer trying sure. to sing Celine Dion. And she she did. Uh, but I, I run into trouble mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, them wanting to hold vowels out, like we were talking about, mm -hmm. with vibrato being too through everything. Yes. Which is why jazz singing is real. Uh, really, uh, it's fun to do some jazz songs with people like that because it makes. I say, okay, hold this straight till now. Now shimmer it out a little bit, and then feather it out, and then hold it straight again. Yeah, Those like kinds that. of exercises. Uh, but so volume and articulation and holding that vowel space too long and things like that. So we just. It's like different languages to me. I was going to say the same thing. It, you know, I don't think anything that we're saying mm -hmm. doesn't exist in the other field yeah, in some way. In, in some way, yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's really vibrato in commercial music. Right. There's straight tone in commercial right. music. Right. And it's the same thing in classical music. Well, a boy's choir is totally straight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And some women's choir things, mm -hmm. you know, they, they require just total. And straight singing is more difficult on the vocal cords than I think being so. able. It is. Than being able to, uh, so kudos to the bluegrassers out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so, what are the fun things that we've shown each other that have helped with? Uh, oh my gosh! First of all, so you have shown me the trampoline. Yes. And and so what what that did for me is I was That's getting so all funny. stiff in ways I know I know better than be stiff, but I was trying to figure out what you were having me do with my throat. So my hips were going like. So you put me on a trampoline where I'm moving my hips. And you mm -hmm. learned that from Dr. Dr. Scott, Scott McCoy. McCoy. Yeah, he actually had me on a BOSU ball. BOSU and uh, we worked on a BOSU ball for a while. I was I trying to one say, one. that's right. That's right, you did. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I'm surprised you listened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I listen to you all the time. Uh, uh, but yeah. yeah, no, it was, it was uh, mind-blowing, really. Uh, my lower abdominal muscles were tight and my hip flexor was tight. And, he recognized it just by looking at me yeah. and he pulled out a BOSU ball from under the piano and said, you're going to stand. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we were working with. You know, we were mm -hmm. working on some of your high notes and right. your breath was, uh, you were stretching up to the high notes, which was great. And I just thought, you know, she'd probably feel a little better if she could breathe a little bit lower and loosen up some of your hips, put you on the trampoline and it worked. And some of my students are familiar with the trampoline now <laughs> and everybody these days, uh, are uh, that are my students are familiar with the little cocktail straw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark, I didn't, I haven't liked, I knew about the bigger one, you know, they yep. use that a lot in th voice therapy and stuff, sure. but I've never found it very useful because most people blow through it, you know, put, push, yeah, instead of pulling. So the, uh, the like brrr, becomes, brrr, you know, exactly when they're blowing through the big yep. one. Because this one will kick you back a little bit, and I love this one so. No, I totally agree. Yeah, I appreciate Thank you very much. And yeah. my students, thank you very much. <laughs> For me, I mean, I keep those. And this is kind of a silly fact. I guess everyone's going to know about it. But uh, <laughs> I keep several of them all over the place. Uh, and every single one of my sports coats that I audition in or suits or whatever, I put a fresh straw in the, in the pocket of the yeah. suit every yeah. single time. And it's just, I mean, it's great because... How often do you get to a place and you just have to go and sing? Yeah. You know, your warm up is in the car to the gig or something right. like that. Uh, and so if you have your straw and you could do a couple circle stretches or something yeah. like that in the car, 
uh, with the straw, just really hone in, your, in on your voice. I mean, it's and you, a you've of come to like the idea of pulling, haven't you? Absolutely, I love it. I for love both of it. our genres. Yeah, yeah. And it's helped me get into my head voice for my classical singing. Oh, that's so awesome. For, and it's a huge deal for me. So for uh, classical singing. Uh, as a male tenor, you know, you get up to about an F sharp and you're changing into um, that kind of uh, that chest mix kind of area. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very much expected that you have this, you know, almost sort of a testosterone filled sound a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. you want to feel like the tenors that you're singing with uh, are digging in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's so easy for us to just push or carry our chest voice up there. But feeling a little bit of that pool. Um, uh, less is more really mm -hmm. I get up to the top and then the high notes open up and it the feels resonance like sings exactly sings itself exactly yeah, yeah. and then I, I don't have to feel like I'm really over engaging do you think that would also help with health when it comes to some opera singers that fall into uh, you know vocal issues from from singing too much from singing absolutely too hard? absolutely yeah. you know there's kind of a, there's a Definitely lot of stigmas with Oh, thing. for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stigmas that surround um, the styles of music and their ailments. Like mm -hmm. how how frequently do vocal uh, do um, classical singers get nodules? Um, and in the research that we had done, especially in Columbus, Ohio, um, with Dr. McCoy, um, it's very similar across the board. Really? See, that surprises me. Yeah. I don't hear about the notes from yeah. classical singers all that much. Yes. But and so Mark is also into voice science, which. Uh, you're more scientifically, you, your background is more scientific than mine. Mine's more, can, uh, more like e experiential in, in the, cla in the totally. contemporary world. Mm -hmm. But I've gained so much. Sometimes I'll know that something works or some, I've seen something work with one of my students. But knowing why helps me apply it better. Sure. So I'll run that to him and say, why did that work? And <laughs> you'll go, oh, well. Dr. McCoy said one time, <laughs> or something, yeah. and you've worked on the electrolarynx? Uh, yes, yeah, that was a separate project. That was for people who had uh, laryngeal cancer, who no longer yeah. have a voice box or a larynx. Yeah. Uh, and so we were doing research on um, electrolarynx. is one of those little devices that you put on your th throat and it buzzes, creates frequencies, and then you shape the sounds with your mouth. And so we were working on a project uh, associated with some uh, pretty large companies to try to develop a new device for that. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just been such an honor and uh, just a just a blast. I so look forward to our morning. Oh, I agree. Our our mornings, so uh, we, we trade a couple of hours each week and, uh, unless we're traveling or something like that or sick. <laughs> one yeah, one of us or the other. Uh, but uh, uh, I thank Mark for some of the things I've been able to to work with you guys on. And uh, so I, I do recommend to other teachers, like think about this, you know, think about even if it's just one hour, just trading lessons with someone that's outside your genre uh, and see what comes of it. And uh, I, I love in networking with uh, great, great teachers. I do believe there is wrong technique and harmful technique. But I also believe there's technique that I've never run into uh, so that I might not be open to it unless I try it. In other words, try, mm -hmm. it, try it, you might like it. Yeah. <laughs> so the bottom line for both of us, I think, is what works. Totally. Yeah. So, Mark, where can they find you? Oh, yeah. So you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and my website. Uh, it's just Mark Tress Music, I believe, on Facebook, M-A-R-K, Tress, T-H-R-E-S-S, -S, Music on Facebook, and on Instagram, it's Mark Tress. Okay, T-H-R. I've been calling it, I'm saying Thress all this time. That's it's okay. Tress. Yeah, it is Tress. Tress, yeah. okay. You can call me Thress, it doesn't matter. All but right. I, before, we, before we sign off, I just wanted to thank you, too, uh, for this experience. It's, it's literally been life-changing, and my students benefit from it. Um, I don't know if we got to talk about this or what information is out there, but uh, I, as you know, I'm a classical singer coming from a commercial background, but I actually teach classical music for commercial singers uh, at the university. So it's at really Lipscomb valuable. Lipscomb and, and Belmont. At Belmont. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lipscomb and Belmont mm -hmm. University in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been so valuable for me to be able to say, this is something I learned from Judy. This is something that works. My students you know, know your name well. Is I get street now? cred. I really do. I get street cred for being able to teach them stuff like that. <laughs> ah, my, my students will know your last name is Tress now. That's okay. Instead no, of I'm Tress. Not. But anyway, thanks again, Mark. No, I really and, appreciate uh, it. You can find us both at our websites, mark, marktress.com, judyrodman.com, 
So just let us know how you, uh, you know, what you think of this, uh, uh, this little interview that we've done and Absolutely. see if it's benefited you yeah, benefited you in any way because yes. then we can pass the word on to even more people. So thanks for being with All Things Vocal and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I can't be smiling though when you say it, right? You so <laughs> I don't care what you do. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> my... <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll stop. I promise. <laughs> okay, okay, you gotta act like you don't know what I'm gonna say. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> so Mark can and I can't remember what I'm saying. <laughs>